Hello, you're very welcome to the fourth and penultimate stage of the Tour of Hungary. Uh, it's the Queen stage, the longest stage, and also potentially one of the chillier stages uh, south of double figures in Celsius. Not too much wind around, but we have got plenty of mountains to face as we're in the Pest County region. And Mark Hershey, the Swiss rider, controlling a narrow but decisive advantage on general classification ahead of three British riders. Tullapool and Onley, probably combined uh, Ineos Grenadiers and TSM assault on the overall race leader. Heading out of Martin Vachard today, a beautiful town in Fair County, popular uh, tourist destination for the Brunswick Palace. from today on the longest stage of the five-stage Tour of Hungary and very much is a stage of two halves. Three intermediate sprints peppering the early exchanges. The first half is pretty much pan flat when you get into climbing proper. Head further east towards a uh, local circuit which will include three climbs of the Pilashanto climb, daunting second category assault. We will make our way back towards Double Goku for the single Cat 1 finish. The second successive summit finish of the week. And a beautiful destination for hiking and outdoor sports of all types. Not least, of course, a bit of mountain biking, a bit of road cycling is popular in this part of the world. First time summit finish in the Tour of Hungary. Very uh, popular tourist in the area near Hillish Jean Kishet. Caravan heading off ahead of the remaining riders in Tour of Hungary. A few non finishers yesterday. And this has been a bruising encounter for many a rider. The wet weather conditions yesterday as well, taking their toll on the riders. But all smiles as riders consider the prospect of one of the most challenging and demanding stages of the week. 2,600 meters plus of climbing facing the riders, six classified climbs. Castle that I've mentioned, and uh, yeah, they tell me that uh, Luke from Beethoven spent some time there and went for Elise. But for whom was Elise? Uh, that was the big question. Not necessarily on the lips of the riders as they prepare to leave, and naturally enough, the Jersey classification holders are uh, close to the head of affairs. Martin Dina, the best Hungarian rider in that white jersey. And the yellow jersey, naturally enough, worn by uh, Mark Hershey, the U18 member of the squad. He's just uh, wrapping up against the elements at the conclusion of the ceremonies. Naturally enough, wants to keep as uh, cool and warm as possible. And Matus Stojcik of the ATT Investment Squad. As well. And Filippo Rodolfo, leader of the King of the Mountains classification, in that red jersey. Proud moment for him, the lead team, no, the Nordisk rider head of the peloton being led out of the castle, which is uh, pretty famous for uh, horse riding as well. Danube River, not too far from here. And of course, this event is set to conclude on day five. The shores of the Danube River in Budapest. The flag came in, and immediate activity off the front of the peloton. Plenty of riders spotting an opportunity, perhaps, for uh, an early break. Success today. Andres Tabot for the second day in succession. Obviously, the Koenig rider 
from Belgium showing some interest in uh, joining that first break of the day. Would it be successful? A break managing to open up an advantage, uh, approaching two minutes, but being kept on a relatively short leash by the, uh, by the main peloton, towed along. UAE team Emirates squad. Yves Lampart in this group as well, the uh, perhaps the best known rider. Certainly the most storied, the most successful in terms of uh, stage successes in the intermediate sprints along the way, exercising the mind and the legs indeed of Dries de Bont. Just about managed to hold off David Martin for that one. Minimum expenditure of energy, of energy and uh, maximum haul of five points for the Belgian Dries de Bont. Martin and uh, Sebastian Schoenberger joining the break today and just rolling across the line in third position. Meanwhile, the peloton with Mato Stojcik, his green jersey, of course, underneath his Chile, and uh, that one secured as a result of his, uh, his efforts in the breakaway twice out of the first three stages. Stumping hard on the pedals. The advantage, uh, two minutes and 30 seconds. Schoenberger, the best placed rider overall in this group, which also uh, includes Matis Kopetsky, the young uh, Slovakian rider. Sorry, Czech rider, 20 uh, years of age for Team Novo Nordisk. David Martin Romero, the uh, Spanish rider for the Leona Cometa squad. Schoenberger, the aforementioned human powered health rider. Dries de Bonten. Yves Lampert and also uh, Jasper de Boast and his team lined up back in the main peloton. Not a destiny present in the break, so not uh, obviously getting involved in the chase. And, uh, they handily place fifth overall with Sylvain Moniquet. With hopes uh, perhaps of moving up on overall general classification or maybe challenging for stage honours. Waiting for the intermediate sprints. Chris de Bont tempting David uh, Martin out of the peloton once more, but relatively comfortable haul of five points. Is this for the uh, points classification? Kind of got an outside chance of winning the, point, uh, the points classification. Worried to be in the, in the break, both today and indeed on tomorrow's final day. And an identical top three to the uh, first sprint. Meanwhile, the peloton towed along. A fairly intense pace. Gap to the group up front, stretches out north of three and a half minutes. Metternich Castle. Sandor Metternich Castle, they call it as well, I believe. Sandor, the, uh, the devil rider, lots of uh, horse riding on these airports. Famous for his exploits. Equine. Well, the first time we've been past one of these uh, spinning classes this week. He's on the road to nowhere. Third sprint, uh, Dries de Bont back up to contest, and uh, Martin would like at least one. And de Bont has to absolutely throw the bike. Nice bit of uh, sprinting bike throw demonstrated by Dries de Bont as he takes a full haul, maximum haul of 15 points towards the points classification. Uh, nine seconds paired off for his overall deficit, but he uh, sits five minutes and 11 seconds down on general classification, so that's not really a consideration for him. As the uh, UAE team Emirates squad set up on the front of the peloton, been there all day. With uh, half the race remaining, Alvaro Hodge grinding away. And the sprinter, no doubt, thinking about the battle to come tomorrow. Sit there straight across his thoughts as he winched the peloton along with that relenting pace. Trans Danubian mountains in all their glory. Schoenberger, once we arrive at the climbs, he's uh, showing some interest, as you might expect, second in this mountains competition starting the day. Schoenberger, the Austrian, the human powered health squad, making a handy haul of 10 points. The rest of the uh, breakaway, not so concerned, but uh, Schoenberger, in with a shout and uh, surely likely indeed to move into the lead of the mountains classification with his presence in the breakaway and with so many uh, climbing assaults the five climbs across the day final climb of course is that summit finish the category one climb to 
Dobogoko, preceded by the uh, Pilashanto climb at 8.6 kilometers to go. Pilashanto, which is the second, third, and fourth times. First time of asking Schoenberger taking those points without too much of a threat from the rest of his breakaway companions. His great achievement really getting into the break. And huge crowd out. It's great to see it, isn't it? Hungarian bike racing and sporting fans in general embracing this event, the 44th edition. Bit of a conversation in the uh, with the team car. Christophe's not happy. Christophe's not happy with the presence of uh, Sebastian Schoenberger in that breakaway. Best placed rider on general classification, just one minute and 20 seconds down on, uh, on the overall race lead of Mark Hirschi. And by being in that breakaway, that meant that Schoenberger was, uh, well, really was so much of a threat to Hirschi. They had very little chance or likelihood of succeeding as they rode hard behind. Uh, but uh, if Schoenberger was willing, having taken 20 points towards the mountains classification and having taken the lead of the mountains classification, if he's willing to drop out of the break, maybe just maybe, they might uh, step off the gas in the main peloton, and that might allow the remaining riders in the breakaway to extend their advantage, as indeed it does. Well up over four minutes inside 40 kilometers remaining. Still the uh, climbs as they press on uh, up front, costing David Martin his place at the front. Kopetsky also struggling a little bit. The three Belgians Kopetsky just about hanging on and drawing himself back into the uh, fray inside uh, 40 kilometers to go and in the on the third climb of the day. Another Nordic rider just about hanging on. Meanwhile, not so much hanging on at the back of the bunch is the, uh, the leader of the points classification, immediately preceded in pursuit of the peloton by Rodolfo, the leader of the uh, climbing classification. But it's, uh, it's Schoenberger that'll be taking over that jersey. The new AT member, it's happy enough to uh, leave it up to the breakaway, but now starting to ratchet up the pace inside 30 to go. And the gap coming down once more, being extended north of four minutes to a smidgen over three and a half minutes, and just two classified climbs to go. To, and they are the Pinochanto climb, the third time of asking, followed by the Atlantic slopes of the double Gorka. Kopetsky has worked hard. It's a good sprinter, you know. Two top ten finishes this week for the Team Nova Nordisk squad. So young Czech rider is, uh, has given a good account of himself in the breakaway today, but they're big engines and very, very well-known riders. And Yves Lampard, 15 times a pro winner of time trial success in the Tour de France. He's a top, top rider. And indeed, the uh, DSM squad have some decent riders to call on. Just to ask a couple of questions. Edmondson and others just uh, putting themselves close to the head of affairs just to try and see if they can challenge the yellow jersey of Mark Hershey. Maybe also thinking too about closing down to the uh, the breakaway group. Schoenberger was a big threat. Uh, Eve Lampard slightly less so, but two minutes and 30 seconds down on general classification starting the day. So. He's the jersey on the road, albeit you'd expect them to be able to close that down. And uh, with 10 kilometers remaining, gap is inside that two and a half minutes. And now the sole objective for the breakaway, that's all they were ever thinking about all day, was to try and hold off and fend off this lead group, which is surely set to dwindle as we approach the lower slopes of the penultimate climb of the day. And it is, uh, it is the penultimate climb, but really it's the start of the main climb proper. It's a sort of a double whammy. There's a there's a little bit of a plateau and then a slight downhill section, and then they go into the final climb. Meanwhile, down to two up front, Drew Stavolt has been jettisoned. And it's Eve Lampard doing the lion's share of the work on the climb. Gaspar de Vos to the Lotto Destiny squad as well, giving a good account of himself, but uh, Javier Jakobsen back in the peloton, the European road race champion. We'll be thinking about battles to come tomorrow and seeing if he can double up after that stage two success. Maybe 
a chance to take the points classification if that comes with it. But it'll be all about the battle for the stage and riders coming out of that lead group as the uh, main peloton, fast dwindling. It's the lower slopes of that penultimate climb. DSM starting to set the tempo on the front. And Tudor Pro Cycling as well. And to uh, present their man. Bossar is handily placed in the top ten of general classification. Monique will get a free ride because he's got uh, Ashford Debo still up front. Inside ten to go. The, uh, the uh, penultimate climb of the day, the Pinochanto. The final time of asking. He'll be glad to put this one behind him. Finally, after three times up that one. Mark Hershey looking comfortable. Got ben Tullett for company right on his, uh, on his tail. And Ben Tullett, of course, second overall at 10 seconds. TSM have multiple options. Two riders, Oscar Only and Max Poole. Poole the better placed of those riders. 16 seconds down on general classification. Mateo Fabro handily placed as well as sixth in general classification. Uh, Monica, we've mentioned, is fifth. One of those riders very prominent, close to the head of the main peloton, which is still pretty big in size. As they, uh, as they hit the Pinochento, the meat of the climb. Meanwhile, up front, less than two minutes advantage as the first salvo is fired by the Ilios Grenadier squad. Jonathan Narvez. And immediately, Mark Hershey, the overall race leader, glides onto the wheel of the Ecuador rider. DSM covering, Lovely is uh, handily placed. Spool two. And the DSM riders sandwiching. Ben Tollett is placed on three US Grenadiers riders in the top 13. Harvey is now 13, uh, 13th overall and 33 seconds back. You would say he's not a huge threat in the overall general classification, and Hershey's having to do this himself. To the front is shrinking. To the leader uh, of this uh, group of favourites, starting to extend a little bit. Hershey closes up quite quickly. More of a, of a job for the DSM riders to to get on terms. This is Onley. He's just uh, eases himself up onto the tail, and Onley goes. Oscar Onley. It's the first attacker for the DSM squad. It looked like that was an attack, and I think it was, but not a full-blooded one. Ben Tullin alive to that one after only heroics yesterday. So, uh, who else is there, thereabouts? Fabio, also for the Chino Pro Cycling Squad. But for the first time in a little while, Finn Fisher Black looked like he was just about able to make his way back up onto the town. There you are, he manages to uh, harvest some resource for the pace setting here. New Zealander, Finn Fisher, Black. And it's just not fast enough to prevent an attack from Jonathan Narvez once more. Ineos Grenadiers with multiple options, and Narvez has certainly shown plenty of intent here. Fisher, Black, no panic from him. He's just going to ease his way up. is certainly asking a big question here. Meanwhile, up front, a minute and a third it has dwindled to, and still eight and a bit kilometers to go. It's a long way to the finish from here. This climb is at its most challenging and most demanding. At this point. And it is out of the saddle as the... Uh, Radiant eases ever so slightly. Up and over. That's uh, penultimate round of the day for the lead group, which is thinning in size somewhat. There's Balderstone Rubens of the Carroll squad at the back, flapping around a little bit, but still just about there. Fishing back regains command of that, uh, of that group of favourites. Meanwhile, the leader's up front. 110, 7.4 kilometers to go, and this is the little plateau section after that climb. So we'll uh, wrap up again very shortly. Could 
a minute and a quarter be enough? It's not quite as steep a climb as you might imagine. There are elements in the lower slopes of this Category 1 ascent that are challenging, but it tends to uh, ease up a little bit in the final three or four kilometres. That's why it's a big push from Fisher Black to try and prevent any attacks. Part with a long turn once more. Compare statistics: uh, 6.8, 7 kilometres. Up to 5.2 is not that's, that's, uh, hugely challenging for riders of uh, the calibre of Mark Hirschi. So Finn Fisher Black has shown some great form lately in the stage victory in the Tour of Sicily. Narvis lines up third behind Hirschi, and then uh, Ben Tollett ahead of Max Poole. Wasad handily placed for the Tudor Pro Cycle as a little look over his shoulder. Good job being done by Rudy Porter of the uh, Jaco Lula squad to move into contention and move up onto the wheel of the DSM and Tudor Pro Cycling riders. Lampart has certainly been much in evidence on the front. Former Belgian national champion. It's a great all rounder. Hugely important uh, element of the Sudar Quick Step squad. Thanks to glory with Fabio Jakobsen already this week. I'd like to repeat that. The Ola Kometa have two riders uh, into the party. The Lot of Destiny squad with uh, Monique. And Sepulveda also into position. Finn Fisher Black, the long way to the line from here. How much more of this can he do? Number one, the camera picks out uh, from a Tour de France and Giro d'Italia winner Egan Bernal, who's safely slotted in. And Bernal having a solid week after his uh, crash on day one. I have thought it was all done and dusted there, but he's still in this event and he's still a factor. Starting the day seventh overall, 22 seconds back. And a few positions back from his teammates. Is this a tactic? Is this an elective? Or just where he's feeling comfortable? Or is it just a, a being a little bit uncomfortable? It's preventing him from moving up. And the effort of the day shows that it's a little bit uncomfortable now for uh, Yves Lampard. Still a minute and a quarter, but still six uh, kilometers to go and this is the really challenging element of this climb this is where it really hurts and their advantage will will shrink rapidly here surely and Fisher Black with the overall race leader Mark here she just stealing a little look over his shoulder feeling a little bit of heat on the back of his neck now he's third in line number three then Ben Tullet and Max Poole ahead of Oscar Ormley Field is better placed overall. Wassar doing a good job, the Tudor Pro Cycling rider. Monique handily placed. Dubont uh, shelled by his Belgian teammates. Or his their teammates, but I suppose they were cohorts in the break. Fellow countrymen. He's been recaptured and will have a lonely ride at the top of the hill from here. This group is not for waiting. Uh, makes his contribution as the result of the penultimate climb of the day. More points to pay uh, at the summit at the conclusion of the stage. And the first three not pretend, you know, not particularly interested in the mountains competition, but this man is interested in stage honors as Jonathan Narvez goes again and Finn Fisher Black looks to cover it once more. Here she grateful for the contribution from his teammate, his only remaining teammate. The Ineos Grenadiers squad with three riders in this group and two make it three general classification threats. We're going to see what they can do about uh, making Mark Hershey nervous. And they need the other teams minded to throw in a salva. It's, uh, it's a climb such that uh, just over 5% for most of it. There's plenty of shelter in the wheels, plenty of slipstream effect. Speeds well north of uh, 20 kilometers an hour for much of this climb. At least the way the pros do it, that is. And it is as distanced as 
only picks up on the front of the peloton. Max Poole nestling on the wheel of Jonathan Narvis. And there's Egan Bernal just moving up and number one, Dossard number one, just to the bottom of your shot. Fabro two for Bora Hansko is handily placed. Dina, best Hungarian rider in white. Oh, look at this for a slingshot effort. But he only just got back on. Narvi is uh, jettisoned after uh, his most recent salvo off the front. All about that for a roll over the top by Jonathan Narvez. Well, he's got what he wanted, which is a decent uh, advantage, a number of seconds, and that will maybe just reduce the likelihood of an immediate response. Indeed, there is a decent stall here. Narvez. Well, this is all about trying to set something up for Ben Tullet. It's a team play. He might uh, personally benefit him. Well, another man they've got back in here is Finn Fisher Black after he too found himself floundering after his efforts to close down the previous Narvis attack. Just like Narvis, he's back into the fray and back, uh, back relevant to the race, back available to Mark Hershey. Pinned down, but still a significantly sized group, isn't it? That advantage, but this is a committed effort from uh, Finn Fisher Black, and he's closing it down to the rider from Ecuador. And that'll be frustration once again for Ineos Grenadiers. Are they going to uh, manage an instant response here? There's Bernal, and it's Hershey that wants to jog up over his teammate. Recognize that Finn Fisher Black, I and mean, he might be gone for good there. Finn Fisher, oh, and it's uh, come now from Only, Only attacks. Oscar Only recognizing the responsibility to put Hershey under pressure as quickly as possible, down to the final four kilometers. The opportunities to put some daylight between themselves and the man in yellow, reducing with every passing kilometer. A reminder, of course, that there are 10, six, and four bonus seconds on the finish line, which could be critical. Just 10 seconds between first and second in the race. Obvious is gonna struggle to come back from here. It's a brave effort, though. He's a bit of a spent force at this moment, but he certainly made a big, uh, a big effort. Meanwhile, we almost forgot about them. Still up front. It's still with 45, 45 seconds or so, maybe even a bit more than that, with uh, smidgen under four kilometers. A long way to go still on a climb of this difficulty, but it's not the most difficult climb in terms, in terms of gradient that these riders will face. So you'd never know. Who dares to dream? Oscar only continuing to ask the question of the now vulnerable overall race leader Mark Hershey. Shorn of teammates. Must be uh, feeling a little bit nervous. These riders must be feeling nervous about their prospects of hanging on to contest for stage honours. They're out of the GC hunter. This, uh, this push behind isn't so much to chase those riders as to put the other GC riders under as much pressure, as much threat as possible. And uh, now it has finally come. Max Poole launches. First really significant salvo. And right all over that, immediately Mark Hershey and his fellow countryman, Yanni Voissart from the Tudor Pro Cycling Squad. Instant response from him. Ben Tullis there as well. Here comes Voissart. And that was perfect as uh, Poole dropped away. Also fancied his chances and not an immediate response from Mark Hershey. That could be significant. Also is at the outer reaches of the top ten. Ninth overall, 33 seconds back, starting the day. And it's uh, the India Grenadier squad that are going to have to respond here. It's Egan Bernal that has hit the front for the first time. It's a bit of daylight between himself and the Hershey group. Once more, the ESM riders throttle back and leave it up to Hershey to close the gap. Indeed, Ergen Bernal himself wilting slightly. Vossar is closed down. And here she it is, first man up. Three kilometers to go, a 206 kilometer ride. The longest uh, journey, the longest stage of the Tour of Hungary 2023. 
Meanwhile, still up front, but still three kilometers to go and 24 seconds is well, it's, uh, an easing gradient, but it's surely not enough. The crowd around in that uh, group of leaders telling you that the well, the intensity is not quite what it might be. Cowaral, place a rider. We see Boulderstone Rubens uh, flirting with the back of this group a little while ago. Has he seen an opportunity? Will that group stall for long enough? Starting the day 45 seconds down on general classification, so not in any real sense a, a major threat to Mark Hirschi. And no one would imagine ask someone else to do the chasing. It's Trek Segafredo. It's a bit like uh, Thibaut Nace. Superb job by the young Belgian. Cyclocross star is a, a junior and under 23 rider. And uh, Bernal again, is it? Yeah, looks like uh, Egan Bernal has stretched his legs. And closes that uh, latest one down with two and a half kilometers remaining. Bernal is not going to be given any leeway by Mark Hirschi. Tullett, Bernal's teammate. Ready to attack if the, uh, the moment should be judged uh, fit for that prospect. And Hirschi, it's Bernal that goes again, actually, and uh, draws Hirschi out of the saddle. But, uh, make it a little bit difficult uh, for Ben Tullett to attack. And then it's the DSM duo with only followed by Max Poole. And Tullett thought about it there. Here she knows it's coming. Tullett the first attempt to attack on the final hill in yesterday's stage. Vossar sneaks up the outside. Here she looking at Tullett once again. Not minded to close it down, and it's uh, it's all up for the breakaway riders. The final two riders from the six-man breakaway that has spent much of the day out front are overhauled. Within two kilometers of the finish line, a brave effort, but ultimately not going to pay dividends as they are uh, overhauled, first of all, by Yanni Vossar. The young rider from Tudor Pro Cycling. There's some significant daylight now on the, uh, on the main peloton behind the main group. To call it a peloton now. It's Balderstone Rubens of the Carral squad himself in a somewhat unloved position on the front of this uh, this group. Vossar has arrived at the break, at the early break. Tullet goes. Tullet for glory. And here she is limpid-like on the wheel of the young Briton. Sylvain Monique of the Lot of Destiny squad doing a solid job to latch on. As indeed, Ashford Abost uh, tries to latch on as well himself and Yves Lampart. From the early break, pulling all sorts of faces, really feeling the pinch. It's been a long day out for them. And Yanni Vossar is in climbing form. He's got relatively fresh legs and he's something of a climbing specialist. And they're prepared to give him a bit of opportunity here. Starting the day 33 seconds down. Here she reasoning, I suspect. You simply can't chase everything. And that's all up for uh, DeBost and for Yves Lampard. Not able to stay with the flying Vossar. Another attack from Balderstone Rubens as he dangles off the front of uh, that group. Vossar looking in flying form only in the front of the, this group. Ben Tullet in the red and the navy of the Ineos Grenadiers squad. And it's Tullet's teammate, Egan Bernal, that goes again. Bernal might have thought an ambush might have been in prospect there. Is it Nace that uh, covers that one? Fabro as well. This time we've seen him really try and get clear of Mark Hershey. Kilometer to go inside the kite. And heading for glory. Will he be able to hang on? Still a long, long way to go to the line from here. Dobogoko and the summit finish. And the big GC play. Well, his final stage ought to be a ceremonial one. It's a flat road, a criterium final stage. So this is the final opportunity for the mountain goats to strut their stuff. Balderstone Rubens is uh, closed down. 
Monique just uh, rolling to the front of the peloton. And Human Powered Health have uh, placed Paul Double into a fine uh, position in this group. Double showing great strength and ability as he comes into the fixed camera positions close to the conclusion of this event. Inside 500 meters to go now for this wonderful young Swiss competitor. Yannick Vossard starting the day, ninth overall at 33 seconds. It looks all done, he's gonna hang on for stage honors here. Victory in the stage is sure at this point. And where will he be on overall general classification? 10 bonus seconds on the line as well available. So what will the gap be to the riders behind? Surely not the 23 seconds he need. He can hardly believe it, it's a massive success. Career-defining victory for Yanni Vossar on stage four of the Tour of Hungary as they sprint for glory. Yeah, but it is the glory only of second place behind. And uh, Mark Hershey is there, thereabouts, enough to pre preserve his uh, position. It was uh, Thibaut Nace that got up for second of the day ahead of Sylvain Monique of the Lotto Destiny team. But no doubt about the rider that got the win. It was Yanni Vossar finally. The pain will ease from his legs and he can celebrate a victory that he can hardly have imagined starting the day. Well, he was ninth overall, so it wasn't uh, an outrageous suggestion, but not one of the big favourites. But he is a rider of emerging prominence. Great win in the uh, Baby Giro stage win a couple of uh, years ago. He also got victory in the Alpi Zer Tour last year. Development races. This is up against a higher caliber of opposition. And he's got a glorious success, as it was uh, Thibaut Nace getting up to take second on the day. And uh, losing his sunglasses on the way. And he won't mind that as he gets another important result as he also develops his career. Glorious success. Oh, it's a big victory for you. Uh, what does it mean to get this in, in this field with, with these kind of competitors? Yeah, this is a, a really nice victory for us, uh, for the team. They did uh, an amazing job uh, all the day and also the, the other days. So I'm really happy to, to have this win for, for them also and, and for me. What was, what was in your mind uh, tactically? You had one attack, uh, three kilometers to go, but, but before that just uh, being in a bunch at the front? Yeah, exactly. The the first part of the climb uh, was steep, but then it was not so steep. So of course it's uh, it's more tactical, and uh, you need to to try something and to 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 have the, the good timing to do it. And uh, and it wasn't it was the good time, so I'm happy. Uh, where you expected the the race to to start earlier? I mean, in one of the previous laps, or or only it was by the the final two climbs? Yeah, I think it. it it wasn't uh, uh, really hard to, to try something uh, for uh, for the DSM team or you know team. So so they had only this uh, this opportunity to to wait the the last climb and and give everything for for that. So I think the the circuit wasn't so hard. Uh, what do you think about tomorrow's stages in a steady circuit? But but it can be a lot of lot of rain. So so it can be tricky. Ah, uh, there is a lot of rain. Okay, yeah. so <laughs> so of course with a lot of rain that could be really tricky. So we will see. Uh, what's next for you after Tour de Hongrie? Normally a bit of rest, and then we will see with the team uh, which race I, I will race. Congratulations for today. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Well, he's deserved a rest after that uh, great effort, but he's still got the small matter of uh, tomorrow's final stage to race through. And Yanni Vossar, his reputation considerably enhanced with this uh, glorious success. See if it may step up on general classification, but uh, uh, Mark Hershey looking solid there. Confirmation of the conclusion of the stage. And Mark Hershey will be satisfied, I think, with his fourth on the day. Mark, really tough finale, you, but you were really strong, uh, defended all the attacks. Uh, tell me about how was it? Yeah, it was super difficult for me. Uh, the team did a good job. They controlled the breakaway, and then in the last climb, I was with Finn. He tried to follow all the auto attacks, but then at one moment, yeah, it was too much. And then it was for me really difficult because the climb was not super steep, but it was still like 15 guys in the GC. And so I had to react, react to a lot of guys, and uh, 
at the end, uh, yeah, I was just lucky that uh, I could make it. Well, it was more than luck, and he has retained that yellow jersey, and surely has done what he needs to win this race. Got to get through the difficult final stage, which potentially could be on treacherous roads in the uh, capital Budapest, but it's a 10-second margin that he carries into that fifth and final stage. Mark Gershie is uh, one of two Swiss riders now in the top three. Annie Voissar has stepped up, moved up into the uh, final podium position behind Ben Tollett. And ahead of Max Pool, Monique still fifth, Only slips to sixth, Fabro seventh now, and Egan Bernal is the green jersey is confirmed once more onto the shoulders of Matos Stucek, the Slovakian rider with the ATT investment squad. Preserved his lead in that uh, classification, but he'll do well to have it after tomorrow, potentially with the sprinters down towards the nether regions of the top 10. Could be a threat. Will he go in the break again tomorrow? Jakobsen and Bauhaus in particular potentially could be taking it from him, but uh, the win in the King of the Mountains, well, that is secure and confirmed. Sebastian Schoenberger has taken all the... Uh, has secured it at this point. He's just got to finish the final stage. His time in the... Breakaway, somewhat truncated after a dis robust discussion with Dries de Bont, but uh, Schoenberger got the points he needed. Ten point advantage over the erstwhile leader, Filippo Rodolfo. And the mountains have been dealt with for all. And uh, naturally enough, the leading Hungarian is Marton Dina of the ATT investment squad. Two jerseys for that uh, squad as they head into the final day. Dina with a comfortable margin of uh, advantage over Kushtor, Valent and the rest in an important and prestigious classification among the local riders. That's it for the uh, fourth stage, just the fifth and concluding stage to come in Budapest. Will Mark Hershey hang on? Uh, it's been a stunning fourth stage. And it's been my pleasure to bring it to you. We'll be back for more in the final stage, but now, for now, from all of us uh, here, it's a good night.